Every day in America, 91 people die a totally preventable death. The weapon of this death is not a gun, a knife, terrorism, even a car wreck. The killer is a chemical. Almost every day there's a news story about opioids, the highly addictive drugs that are designed and sold to ease pain. And if I ask if you or someone close to you have ever been impacted by opioids, whether it's a son or a daughter, a mother, a father, a husband, a wife, a brother, sister, niece, nephew, uncle, aunt, or close friend, chances are you would say yes. Drug abuse and addiction touches rich and poor, white and black, urban and rural, even those of faith and those with none. And most people hooked on opioids get started legally and under the care of a physician because we begged for relief from pain. Pain is the underlying reason that a person first takes an opioid drug. I want to give you just a little confession here tonight. I tell every doctor and nurse who treats me that I am allergic to penicillin and pain. That's right. Look, I admit it. I got the pain threshold of a three-year-old. I am not a tough guy. I don't even play one on TV. John Wayne is dead, and I was not hired to replace him. But escaping from every tinge of pain that we ever might experience has been marketed to us as the Holy Grail. Pharmaceutical companies create drugs and then they convince us through aggressive marketing that we need them, that we must have them. Doctors prescribe them because we want to be free of any and all pain and we're willing to pay handsomely for those drugs. And by the way, politicians of both parties rake in the campaign cash as they purposefully protect the legal pushers while getting tougher on those who push the cheaper versions of dope on the streets. Big pharma companies pour over $28 million into the purses of political campaigns and PACs. Now let's compare that. All the gun groups, pro and con, give a total of $5.8 million. The legal pill pushers get invited to the White House and they mingle with the swells and members of Congress. The street dealers, they get sent to the big house and mingle with the dregs of society. But the victims of opioids are just as dead, whether their source was a name brand manufacturer or whether it was a 20-year-old selling from his car in a dollar store parking lot. I don't want to experience pain, but truthfully, Pain isn't my worst enemy. Being artificially numbed into a drug-induced euphoria, that's my worst enemy. People and civilizations have survived millenniums of pain and suffering, but no civilization will ever survive if the population is addicted to being free of all pain, but then becoming even more addicted to the drugs that trade pain for pharmaceutical slavery. Pain actually does have a purpose. It's necessary to know what's wrong with us and it actually develops a toughness that drugs will take from us. Even emotional pain motivates us to overcome and move forward. Therapeutically masking or subjugating our hurts that suppresses all reality may not actually work in our best interest. And it is the pain in our souls and the profound guilt of our imperfections that cause us to see the frailty of our human condition and which ultimately drives us to seek God's grace through forgiveness and find something that narcotics can never give, hope and peace within.